Hello, my name's Leslie Atherton and this is a short story called Office Viking. On hearing an uncommonly deep voice seeping from her boss's glass-fronted box room into the communal office space, Grace couldn't stop herself from investigating, just a little. She looked over her shoulder with curiosity, then remembered the voice must have emerged from the young man who had begun his contract there that morning and who had been receiving induction training with Chrissy. To Grace, the look may have begun as a glance, but became long and lingering as she absorbed the effect of the man's deep blue suit and narrow tie. He looked almost like her dad in his mod pictures from when he used to take the Lambretta down to Brighton in his 60s heyday. But this man was no mod. He was more of a, a, what do they call it now? A bohemian? No, that wasn't it. A hipster. More of a hipster. The kind who would eat breakfast at a brightly coloured city centre cafe specialising in Japanese cereal varieties, who would carry his lapdog in a baby sling and who might wear Viking beads in his immaculately trimmed, fragrant, oiled and coloured beard. He might not have been Grace's type, yet she found herself entranced. In fact, it proved impossible to move her eyes away from her new colleague. Her initial looks changed from ordinary curiosity to serious, intense interest, and once she stared at him for only a few seconds, Grace turned her entire body around to face the boss and the hipster. All she knew of him was his name, Daniel Smith. His name was the epitome of ordinary, but the fact was that, to Grace, he had become anything other than ordinary. The way her body felt as she glimpsed him for the first time was something she had never experienced before in the whole of her 29 years. Was it only 29 years? She'd been single and lonely so long that it might as well have been 129. She'd worked hard at maintaining the illusion too. Not a single person at work suspected she spent each night alone or at craft workshops, generally attended by middle-aged creatives keen to escape their humdrum domestic existences. Grace had lied about having a boyfriend since the first day of working at Mallinson's, as it seemed the easiest way to fit in the company's family office atmosphere. And despite the reality that it would have been easy to uninvent her fake partner, she'd kept him on as an instant invisible excuse and protection against the come and meet my second cousin, you'll love him, he's been single for years kind of helpfulness she dreaded. On work nights out, her other half was always busy or working away, and her colleagues accepted that. After all, why would she lie? But as Grace continued to stare at Daniel, she felt compelled to not be single any longer. Her boss, their boss, Chrissy, turned to indicate an office space for Daniel, and noticing Grace in her eyeline, called to her, Grace, come and meet Dan. And Grace didn't need any further encouragement. Straightening her skirt and ensuring her cleavage was plumped up just the right way, not sassy, not staid, Grace walked over with a tiny wobble to give both Dan and Chrissy her prettiest smile. Sure of her full coral lips, browner than orange, and teeth sparkling white, even and fresh, she was nevertheless anxious that she hadn't smoothed and de-smudged the black eyeliner she always wore. It would look as if she had been weeping if she wiped it off walking towards them, so she turned away just slightly holding her hand up to indicate just a second, and while she dispensed a cup of ice-cold liquid from the office water pitcher, she gently scraped under her eyes, hoping the action didn't cause undue puffiness. Carrying the newly filled cup of water, always useful to have a prop, she thought, Grace's nerves were a little more subdued as she completed the final distance towards Dan. Dan, with his shoulder-length blonde wavy hair, with his eyes that, as she drew closer, she realised were chestnut brown, not the usual blue she'd usually associate with such bearded Viking-like good looks. She longed to be held in those strong muscled arms, but what on earth was she thinking of? He'd never even spoken to her, and already she was fantasising about date-night hugs on the sofa and hill-walking on the snowy peaks, hand in hand, with a complete stranger. Dan held out his hand as she neared him. They were beautiful hands, with nails longer than Grace usually liked on a man, but nails perfectly suited to the length of his fingers. She liked their ivory curving moons and the white tips, but she was also concentrating on his hands for another reason, for the telltale sign of a marriage on the blonde beauty's hands. She found no jewellery, with the exception of a single Celtic silver ring on his right hand middle finger. Still, the absence of a ring didn't prove much. She would have to check for sure by taking a sneaky peek at his job application form at a later date.
Grace realised that Dan was still holding out his right hand to her and that she had ignored it, distracted by her endeavours to discover more about the marital status of the man who was now beginning to look awkward. She reached out to shake and as she touched him, skin on skin, both she and Dan jolted. What was almost a pain or jab between them drew them both back, like the gentlest of electrical shocks that Grace remembered from plugging in a faulty and ancient Carmen hairdryer as a child. That's what Dan was, a shock to her system. Interesting, though, that it hadn't been all one way. Dan seemed visibly affected by their physical touch, too, and Grace was somewhat assured that perhaps he was feeling about her just what she was feeling about him. He certainly seemed as reluctant as she was to let go of their handshake. But they were forced apart when Chrissy handed Grace a folder of training paperwork and said, OK, Grace, find him a chair and train him up on the phone and email systems. I'm up in finance for an hour or two. An hour, thought Grace. A whole hour with Dan on her own. Two would be better, but still, such bliss. But despite his initial physical reaction to her, Dan didn't seem overwhelmed with the prospect of time alone in her company. In fact, the poor man had suddenly begun to look concerned. Don't be nervous, Grace said. I don't bite. Then, after a hesitation longer than she would have wished, flirtatiously, she said, Not unless you want me to, and even then you'll have to ask very nicely. I'll try my best not to leave marks. Inevitably, the moment the words had left her mouth, Grace wished she could have tugged them back in to remain unembarrassingly unsaid. Cringing at her own stupidity, she could barely look at Dan, that pale, woven creature with eyes so dark they shone with the glossy glow of polished chestnuts. Had she spoiled things? Would it ever be easy between them? Was he as anxious as her? And what on earth could she say that would possibly make up for such a cringe-worthy start? Would there be a time in their future when they'd laugh about their first meeting? They were yet to discover. She couldn't look at him, couldn't speak to him, couldn't move away either. So what followed were the most awkward, ridiculous few seconds of Grace's life. And they only ended when she pretended to remember a job that required doing absolutely immediately. Excuse me, she said, I need to make this phone call. She could see she was pressing in the numbers that Dan was turning away and trying to calm down. As she talked on the phone to her sister, she could see that Dan was succeeding and this helped her calm too. She must remember that as a future distraction technique. She may need all the help she could get if she was going to spend any more time around this man. Anxiety to one side, she still wanted to shout out, notice me, like me, love me. She restrained herself, though, and instead she said, So, OK, has Chrissy given you your login ID? Have you used this type of email system before? Suddenly professional, Dan relaxed and replied. It wasn't long before they were chatting like old friends, relaxing and at times even laughing. By the time Chrissy had been in to see them both, they were no longer flirting. Instead, they were talking as if they'd known each other for years. Instant attraction had converted to long-term friendship. And who knows what else?